So this is the 2021 Ford Bronco Badlands Edition with the optional Sasquatch upgrade. Ford has kind of gone a little nostalgic with us on this Ford Bronco and I kind of like the styling. Um, they brought this out to kind of compete with the, the Jeep Wrangler which has been a staple in the off-road community for years. Uh, this is Ford's attempt to kind of lure maybe some Jeep owners away uh, or get some new uh, family in the off-road scene. Uh, and they'll be very happy with it. It comes with a laundry list of options. Options like a 2.7 liter EcoBoost V6 delivering 330 horsepower and 415 pounds of torque. Electronic locking front and rear differentials. Position sensitive Bilstein shocks. All sitting on a set of 17 inch forged aluminum beadlock capable wheels. So if you pay just over 60 grand for a new Ford Bronco, why would you want to modify it? Well, the fine people over at Zone Off-Road thinks a little bit of lift will make you happy. And adding three inches of lift to the Bronco does make me very happy. The ride quality feels good, but more importantly, the lifted Bronco can easily tackle obstacles that would have been a nightmare to do before upgrading. Three inches of lift might not be enough to make me sell my Wrangler, but it's enough to make this lift kit an essential upgrade for any Bronco owner. So if you just bought the Zone Off-Road lift kit or you're thinking about upgrading your Bronco, follow along and we'll show you how to do it. All right, first step in the process is to take the sway bar link off the lower control arm. Uh, to do this, we'll need a nine millimeter hex wrench or Allen key wrench and a 21 meter, millimeter box end wrench. All right, moving on to the next step. We need to remove the wheel speed sensor and the brake line and from the, the steering knuckle here. Uh, these both require an 8 millimeter socket and a 10 millimeter right. socket. So now that we've removed the wheel speed sensor and the bracket from the steering knuckle, we're also going to want to remove this uh, bracket from the frame which holds the uh, brake lines and the wheel speed sensor as well. So now we're gonna loosen the upper ball joint nut. Uh, just loosen it a couple turns. Uh, don't take it off all the way. Uh, later on, we're gonna whack it right here and, and separate it from the steering knuckle. So I'm using a 18 millimeter wrench and a 10 millimeter to back it up. All right, so now that you have the upper ball joint separated from the steering knuckle, uh, we're gonna go ahead and Remove the nut all the way and just let this whole spindle drop down. So sometimes you might need to back this up with a 10 millimeter because it see how it just spins like this. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We have a long pry bar here. We're going to put it under the spring and push down on the A-arm. And go ahead and remove this nut. And this should just all come loose. Uh, we're going to go ahead and remove the steering tie rod. We're going to loosen this nut with a 21 millimeter wrench. You ever heard the term balls out? You know where that comes from? No. Anybody? No. So it's an actual term from the 1800s when steam engines were uh, pretty prevalent. 
so they had a governor on the steam engine so it wouldn't run away. What is this history tangent? I'm trying to put this lift on my Bronco. Can we just move forward? I had these little balls, so the faster the engine went, the balls would come out like that. And so when the balls were straight out, that meant you were going balls out. Come on, man, I don't need a history lesson. Let's go. And so uh, it means you're really hauling ass. You know the term balls out? What? You know the term balls out? Just get back to the video already. It was the governor on the steam engine. You know those little balls that oh, spin yeah, around? Yeah, yeah. When they go up, it you know, kind of governs the engine. Nice. Uh, very good. You learned something new today. All right, so I got the uh, impact gun out here and a 35 millimeter socket. And we're gonna go and take the CV spindle nut off. So what this will allow you to do is remove it off the, the CV shaft here and get you a little bit more room to work. Okay, this is an air hammer. Uh, it's gonna make life a little bit easier. Don't necessarily need one, you could use a mallet and pound the spindle out. Uh, we're gonna pound this uh, the CV out of the, the spindle here just so it'll make it a little bit more free and, and fall away for us. <laughs> there you go. We're doing things. All right, with the lower control arm jacked up and supported, we're gonna go ahead and loosen the three top bolts here on the strut with a 15 millimeter wrench. leave this one secured and then go ahead and lower the jack and take some pressure off it. All right, with all three bolts loosened and removed, we can push down on this lower A arm. like that. So part of the deal on this is when you put your spacer on here, it's gonna bolt to these studs, which we'll have to cut down later. But in order to do that, there's a little alignment pin right here that needs to go away. So a pair of vice grips, pretty easy. Just clamp it on there, off it comes. All right, let's figure this rolling out. Okay, so we've got the strut out of the vehicle and it's in our spring compressor. We're gonna go ahead and take off this 18 millimeter uh, nut right here. Once we get that off, we can get the, the spring cap off, the spring off, and have the strut exposed. The reason we need to take the, the spring off is we're gonna put a preload spring spacer in there, which gives the, the spring a little bit more preload. And we're also gonna put a bump stop spacer in there, which will increase your bump zone. Okay. So, we got our strut removed from the spring. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and take off this, this spacer here. So we've disassembled our, our strut. We've got the spring off, we've got our shock body off, our shock body exposed here. Um, we've gone ahead and taken the dust boot and the bump stop off. Uh, there is a little dust cap or washer here, which we've knocked off, which allowed us to remove the lower seat for the spring. Um, we're gonna go ahead and install this uh, preload washer. This will uh, space this bottom uh, spring perch up a little bit and give you a little bit more preload in the spring. Just like that. So for reassembly, we're going to put the shock boot with the bump stop on it. 
back over the shaft and we're going to install this new bump stop spacer like such put the retainer back on and then go ahead and uh, reassemble the spring be gay Reassembled. We have our uh, preload spacer and our bump zone spacer installed, and our spring is at the correct orientation for the shock. I've also clocked the top hat 180 degrees. Uh, we do that for our spacer that's going to go on top here. Um, before we can actually put this on, we're going to have to measure 13 sixteenths from the base up here onto the stud, and then we're going to go ahead and trim that, which will allow us to install the spacer on here and have a nice flush stud so this doesn't hit the top of the strut tower in the vehicle. Okay, measuring from the base of the top hat, we're gonna measure a 13 sixteenths and make a mark. And this is where we'll be trimming our stud through the spacer. So with all our studs marked to 13 sixteenths, we can go ahead and use a cutoff wheel and trim our studs down. trim the 13 sixteenths on the strut here we're gonna go ahead and install our spacer um, the spacer gets three uh, 10 millimeter bolts I bet they're about 45 millimeters long they're gonna be the shorter bolts in the pack uh, just stick them in the back here you'll see there's a hex and they just kind of key in so you just drop them in like this Since we have our studs installed in the spacer, uh, this is a tapered spacer and the fat side of the taper is going to go to the outside of the shock which faces the wheel and the way we know that is the reservoir faces in towards the vehicle or the frame. Another way to see that is there's a casting mark here on top of the, the spacer and that will face the outside. Once that is in place, you'll take the factory hardware and install it back on the spacer. And there you go. So part of this lift kit is replacing the upper control arm. Uh, we have zone off-roads cast upper control arm here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and replace the, the OEM one. Uh, there's a few steps involved with getting this one off and uh, I'll explain it to you here in a little bit. So part of this upper control arm removal, we're going to have to take the steering shaft off right here. Uh, it's a 10 millimeter bolt. Just go ahead and loosen it. I found it easy to, to pop out some of these clips on the inner fender well so you can kind of fold this up and get in there better. Once you have that bolt out, all you have to do is slip that shaft up and this falls down. You'll have access to the bolts on the upper control arm, which will allow you to slip it out. All right, now that we've gotten our steering shaft out of the way, I'm going to use a 21 millimeter and a 24 millimeter wrench. I'm going to come up here on the upper control arm and loosen our bolts. Okay, 
that's it. All right, so now that we have the OEM upper control arm out, we're gonna take out the upper ball joint and install it in the new upper control arm from Zone here. Um, before we do that, there's a little snap ring right here we need to pull out, and then they include a sleeve to go with your ball joint press. Uh, that just basically sits on here like this, and I'll show you how it goes together. Like that we have it out and we will reverse the the same thing reverse the procedure into this upper control arm here i found it's easier to put the the clamp in the vise and then set everything up as we uh reinsert this upper ball joint if you notice there's a little slot here and there's a slot in the a-arm right here you want to line those up If you notice, see this flat here? You want to keep those lined up. Next step is we're going to go ahead and reinstall our snap ring and secure this. So one of the last steps before securing the cap on here is installing your uh, snap ring again. So just get your snap ring pliers, spread it open. So the very last step after installing your ball joint and then installing the vehicles, we have this little uh, dust cap here. And I think it's just easy to take it, put it on there and take a dead blow. And... We're back at the Bronco. We have our new upper control arm assembled with an OEM ball joint. Uh, we're gonna do what we did in reverse. As we took the factory upper control arm out, we're gonna do the same with this and install it back up here. Don't forget, we took the string linkage apart, so we're going to have to put that back together as well. And that concludes installation of your upper control arm. All right, we have our fully assembled strut here with our spacer on top. We're going to go and hit and install it back in the Bronco.
completes the install of the front end. Uh, stay tuned, we'll be moving to the rear end and showing you how that all goes together. So we've wrapped up the front of the Bronco. We've got our suspension done up there and we're moving to the rear of the Bronco. Uh, one of the first things we're going to need to do is take this inner fender liner out and that'll give us access to these bolts here that hold the strut in. So whether you're working off the ground on jack stands or on a lift like we are, you're going to need to support this rear axle. And we have a, uh, a training jack here that we've modified with a cradle to support our axle. The reason you want to support your axle is because the strut is what's holding the axle up or from drooping down too much. Alright, so we are going to remove the strut now. We're going to use a uh, 15 millimeter wrench on the top and a 27 millimeter on the bottom. What's great about the Bronco is they put nut tabs on just about everything. So you just hit it from one side. You don't need to back it up with a wrench. We're going to go ahead and remove the bottom. So we're going to use a 15 millimeter box end wrench here, ratchet wrench. Makes life a lot easier. Uh, we're going to take the three bolts off the top of the strut and drop it out. Hold it right there, son. Do you love modifying your off-road vehicle? Yeah! Have you got the right tools to do the job? Yeah! Do you enjoy being alive? No. Well... Too... Too bad. Because I'm going to give you the know-how to keep you from taking a coil spring to the coconut. The spring in that strut is under extreme pressure. Removing that spring without using a spring compressor could get you a quick trip to the hospital. Or the grave. When removing the strut from the vehicle, only remove these three nuts. So remember, unless you want a one-way ticket to a pine box, don't touch that center nut without a spring compressor. Thanks for keeping me alive, Poly Performance. There we go. So the next step in this process is we have to trim these studs. Um, the reason we do that is so when you put your your spacer on you have a nice flush surface uh, on the top here so we're going to measure one inch from the base of the cap okay. So now we've got the, the studs trimmed on the top of our strut here. Um, that allows us to install our top cap or spacer and have a flush mount fit. What you also have to do before you reinstall it into the, into the Bronco, almost made a mistake there, did you hear that? We need to uh, clock this 180 degrees. So this stud needs to be down here and these two need to be up here. So in order to do that, we have our handy dandy spring compressor right here. So I'm going to go ahead and compress the spring. I'm going to loosen this nut that you're not supposed to loosen until this is compressed. So when you spin this top cap, you want to make sure your isolator is staying in the same location. You don't want to spin the whole spring. Otherwise, uh, you'll get spring bow and that's not good. It'll collide with other parts of the Bronco. I'm going to make a mark from, so I know where this stud goes in relation to here. We don't want this to spin. 
that needs to line up here with the spring. So I made a mark here directly across on this stud and I'm going to turn the cap so this stud lands right here. top cap rotated 180 degrees here on our strut. Go ahead and take your, your spacer and the 10 millimeter. These are the longest bolts that come in the kit. We use the shorter ones on the front, but we'll go ahead and insert them here. And then install it on the cap. You're going to reuse your old hardware that came off the strut to secure this cap on. back at the Bronco. Uh, we're going to install this strut back into the Bronco, but before we do that, it gets another 3-8 spacer on top of this plastic spacer here. Uh, we're going to use three 10 millimeter nuts. These are locking nuts. Um, be sure when you put this back in, the reservoir is facing forward. So we're going to go ahead and pop her back in here. top secured we can go ahead and install our bottom bolt on the axle assuring that our reservoir is pointing forward the only thing left to do is put our inner fender back in That's it folks, the rear is done. Okay, so this, uh, after you get everything installed, we got our rear and your fender liner put back in. Of course there's rivets and whatnot that, uh, that came out of here. Um, but rear struts back in, we'll get the wheel back on and then put on the ground and uh, we'll see how it looks. All right, now that we got the zone off-road, three-inch lift kit on the Bronco, we've taken it on the trail, done some rock crawling, and uh, driven it on the freeway, and it handles great. Just as good as factory. Um, if you've gotten to the end of this video, go ahead and subscribe, and I might get a raise. <laughs>